Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Jakarta Tech Talk. I am thrilled today to have joining us Perman Borg, founder of CT uh, founder and CTO at Speedment. Per today is presenting JPA Streamer expressing hibernate JPA queries with Java Streams. Per is a passionate Java developer dedicated to open source software and an expert in finding new ways of solving problems. The harder the problem, the better. As a result, he has over 15 US patents, US patent applications and invention disclosures and a deep understanding of in-memory databases, high performance solutions, cloud technologies, and concurrent programming. Per is also a regular speaker at conferences and Java events all over the world. Without any further delay, I'll turn it over to you, Per. Take it away. Okay. Thank you for this uh, comprehensive introduction. So uh, actually, my next slide is about myself, but I guess I had to just skip that. So I'm going to talk about JPA Streamer. And this is a descriptive name. Uh, so it's about streaming, creating streams with JPA and expressing your queries, not just getting a stream, but expressing streams with, with, the, with the Java, Java streams. So let's, um, let's skip this picture. Uh, I've been around since Java 1.0. That's uh, many more cycles uh, ago. So the talk is divided into two separate sections. sections. One is the actual presentation and one is a live code demo. Uh, and I actually like live code demos generally more than just a presentation. So I don't know about you, but uh, if you like one thing or the other, uh, it doesn't matter. It's something for here, something for you anyhow. So what's the problem? Uh, well, I like uh, JPA and Hibernate. It provides uh, a nice way to abstract away uh, inconveniences. But really, I really like Java more. <laughs> I love Java and I like the Java Stream API. So this is kind of uh, gives me a bit of a problem uh, because I need to mix Hibernate uh, queries and to get kind of, uh, of Java streams when I'm, I'm type, uh, writing my queries. And it's not completely tile safe or it's not intuitive at all. So I have to switch back and forth between these different uh, concepts of SQL and Java. And it's kind of this annoying uh, impedance mismatch between them. So that's why we started. We, we were thinking, can we do this uh, in a better way? And you might think now that, uh, isn't it possible to, to obtain streams from, from JPA uh, as it is? And in fact, it is. Uh, you can uh, write an expression and then, for example, using SQL and then get the stream. But you can't express your query as a stream. That's the big difference. And I think you're going to understand what I mean with express as the presentation progresses. So what's already there in JPA is kind of relies on a wrapped stream from the previous uh, SQL query or, or uh, something else that you do. And sometimes it's even a use of performing a complete table scan. And um, as a matter of fact, the default implementation for, for the stream operation is actually to materialize everything from the query into a list. And then only after that invoke a stream. And that's, of course, a disaster in terms of, of performance and also memory usage. And, and to add, add things even worse, uh, the implementation of this stream sometimes is uh, flawed also. So let's see, uh, what is Java Stream API? Well, I think it's very efficient and terse and type safe. And it's very uh, intuitive to express uh, application logic with, with Java streams. And if we just add JPA Streamer, you can add all these features to your uh, JPA application. You get the same features as the Java Stream API, basically by just having a single dependency in your application. So this is a video. And just before the presentation, I was told that you're not going to hear uh, the audio of this video. That's unfortunate because uh, I think the, the voice in the, in the video is it's better than mine. But anyway, you have to stick to to my voice here. So I'm going to run this and trying to talk simultaneously. Uh, oh, I was supposed to do that. So let's see what happens here. So JPA Streamer is, is a great tool to express queries uh, using JPA uh, using Java streams. So for example, if you have an example using Hibernate, you can add a single dependency and then your application instantly can use a Java streams. So here's an example. So I can instantiate my JPA streamer like this, or I can auto-wire it using Spring. And once I've done this, 
I can easily stream a row in a database like this. I apply a pipeline of operations like this. And the queries are kind of easy to see here what it does. And I can, I can leverage code completion here. And I see what kind of uh, columns I have here and what I can apply. And uh, in this case, I added a filter here. So these are also automatically optimized to use SQL under the hood. So it will kind of create a SQL query here. So in this way, you can boost your development uh, instead of uh, spending time with debugging. And you can go to jpastream.org and see how you can install this single dependency here. And unfortunately, you missed all the, the nice, uh, cool sound effects in, in this video. I couldn't do them as I spoke. So <laughs> I encourage you to go there and watch the real film after the presentation. Anyways. So this is a, a comparison between three different ways of writing a kind of spring um, or, or a kind of a query. So on the le left-hand side, uh, we are using JPA criteria builder. In the middle, we have a spring data JPI. And at the right-hand side, on the right-hand side, we have the JPA streamer. And I will not dive into the details, but you can see that this is quite compact and small compared to especially using the JPA criteria builder here. So it provides a nice mean, a nice way of keeping your code clean and uh, kind of uh, easy to, to understand. I mean, also most of the times your code is actually read rather than written. So once you have written this, I think it's very easy to understand the intention of all this. So there are examples in literature when, when there are more than 100 times more reads than writes of developers in code. So I think that's a very important perspective to have. When you write code, it should be easy to, to be understood. So let's take a little bit more deep down into this. It's a, a declarative style like, like uh, streams. So it's shorter code, uh, improved readability, and improved code metrics. So th the complexity of this method when you run static code analysis, for example, is much less than the other examples we've shown on the previous page. It's also completely type safe. Uh, admittedly, you have a partially type safe uh, uh, when using criteria builders, but it's not entirely type safe. Uh, but this is entirely type safe. Uh, and it's possible to detect errors once you're developing, and it will improve your code quality, and it will ultimately save you time, not only when you're developing, but especially uh, for code maintenance. So this is uh, basically JPA streamer in a nutshell. And when I was asked to have this presentation, it should take about an hour. And actually, APA stream is, is only about this stream overload method, uh, which is just one overload. It's just the JPA streamer stream. That's basically what it does. And so I was kind of, uh, well, uh, how I'm going to talk about this for one hour, but let's see how, how long time this will take. Uh, so this is an example. I, I use the JPA streamer instance here and say that I want to stream of user users here and users here is a jpa entity class that is very important to understand i can't just put into or string or something else here then jpa streamer wouldn't understand this it must be something that is a jpa entity in this case i'm filtering out all the users with the first name starts with an a then i sort them using the last name in reverse order i'm only interested in the first 10 of those and then I'm going to print them out on, on the console like this. Uh, you might wonder what this user dollar is, and I will uh, tell you about this a little bit later. However, when you start to think about this, you might think that, wow, this doesn't seem very performance um, kind of friendly, because it looks like everything, the entire table is going to be pulled in into the JVM. And, and then we're going to compare all those millions of users if they start with A, and then maybe there are tens or 20,000 that started with an A, so we're going to sort all them, and then just have a look at 10 of them. That, that doesn't sound efficient. But that's not the way it works. The cool thing is that JPA Streamer is able to introspect its own pipeline. So these operations here, which are circled with the red, they are called intermediate operators. And this last one, this is a terminal operator. So when, when the stream will reach its terminal operator, it will, before it's doing what it's supposed to do, it's going to inspect its own pipeline and see which of these operations can I merge into a SQL query. 
And it will start here and look at the filter and see that, wow, I can recognize this, this predicate here. This, this predicate here is actually um, populated with the metadata that is enough for me to, to extract this predicate and merge it into the SQL query. And actually the same is true for the sorted one because I, this predicate here or this, uh, this column name has enough of metadata to be merged into SQL. And also this uh, third operation here, limit 10, can also be merged into the SQL data. So this will look like something like this. Uh, this stream will be kind of collapsed into this SQL query. Select user uh, from user where first name equals to whatever parameter I had and using this order here, last name descending. So that's quite cool. So, so what we will be doing in reality is that we will have JPA Streamer issue this query, query, select from user, and this will be executed in the database. And the last section here in the terminal operator will be executed in the JVM. And this is all under the hood. You don't have to think about this. This is happening all automatically. So how is this possible? Well, JPA Stream is using an annotation processor to form this metadata model. Uh, the metadata model is this class with a dollar uh, at the end. So it will kind of see all the entities you have on your class path, and it will generate, generate a corresponding uh, uh, metadata class for that type class. And, for, and that is uh, also used for all the columns. So all the columns have predicates like this, and it also depends what kind of column it is. So depending on what kind of column it is, you will have different kind of predicates here. For example, if it's an integer, you might have some of them, but if it's a string, you might have other operators here. And these predicates here can all be used by, by the JPA stream, it's query optimizer. So that's quite cool. So let's take a, a deeper look into what an entity actually might look like. So this is a, an example of a user entity uh, declared in JPA. And I haven't changed anything here. Uh, this is a completely normal JPA declaration or a class. So we don't have to do anything with the, the existing code we have. We can use it as it is. So here we have, for example, user ID, which is kind of, I guess it's an integer. We have a first name and a last name, and we have a bunch of of other properties here too, uh, that's not seen on this on this screen here. So JPA statement does not alter or disturb the existing code base. It just adds the ability to handle Java stream queries from this point forward. Everything you had before will still work as it used to do. This is just a small thin layer on top of, of JPA that you add. And the metadata model by default is placed in the generated sources subfolder. You can also set this to another folder if you'd like to, for example, check in this code for some reason. So what's required to use JPA Streamer? Well, obviously you have to have uh, Java 8 because streams were only introduced in Java 8, but you can use any version of Java higher than eight or higher. Of course, you also need a JPA provider like Hibernate. Uh, Hibernate is the most common one, but there are also certainly others like Eclipse li Link. Uh, the objective of JPA Streamer were never to replace uh, JPA provider. It's just adding uh, things on top of an existing JPA provider. You can download uh, from GitHub, uh, or you can just add a single dependency in your Maven or Gradle build. And the metadata models are generated as bytecode from the existing JPA entities. And the source code, of course, you can you can also uh, inspect that and look how it how it works and all that stuff. So there is nothing secret here. It's nothing magic going on. It's just pure Java. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, if, as you saw in the video, the first thing I need to do is to create this kind of, uh, you can tell it kind of a factory pattern, which is the JVA streamer, JPA streamer. And it needs to know what kind of persistent unit uh, you are using because you might have several different uh, persistent units. Now the persistent unit is, is basically a, a container of different settings for you, your project. For example, which database I'm using, what's JDBC drivers, uh, what's the login uh, credentials that I'm using at the moment. Uh, there are also some overloads of this function. So instead you can use the JPA factory here instead. 
Uh, I'm going to show examples of that. If you use, if you like Spring, you can use the auto wired annotation. So you can just auto wire this uh, kind of instance here, and you can just use it in your Spring application. Okay. Once you have the JPA Streamer uh, instance, uh, you can invoke this Stream User class, and as we talked about before, this will return a stream of all the user rows representing all the user rows. It doesn't contain all the user rows. That's the difference because the, it returns a stream representation of all users. So as we saw before, we can add like filters and sorting and all sorts of stuff uh, there to reduce the actual set being pulled in, in by the JVM. So this is one example. Uh, in this case, I'm going to actually materialize a list of strings. I, I create the stream with the users uh, of age greater than 20. And I apply this kind of mapping here using a standard stream operation. I extract the first name, uh, space, and the last name. And then I can just, just collect that string uh, into a list like this. Now, of course, this is the terminal operator. So the terminal operator will go up here and see, wow, this filter here, I can merge that into SQL. And then it will continue to this map. And of course, it will see that I can't merge this into the SQL code because this is a Java dynamic lambda. So that's not really possible to merge into the database query. So from this point on, uh, a logic will be executed in a JVM and not the database. But this line here will be optimized away and merge into the SQL query. So this, as I said, this user refers to the metadata model that's been generated by that annotation processor. And it's not only filter that can use this, it's, it's the sort operators and also some other operators like the all match and similar stuff. Uh, actually, when you come to think of it, there are many operators, many oper operations in a stream that can take uh, predicates or other things like this to kind of enrich the stream. Okay. Here is another example that suppose I want to uh, kind of distill all the persons, all the users that are from Germany and has a name named Otto. Uh, I can do that by combining a predicate. So I can say that I want to filter all users with a country equal to Germany and another predicate user first name equal to Otto. And then I will go to the count, which is a terminal operation. So count will go up here and see that, wow, I can recognize this predicate. It is a composed predicate that com is composed of two parts, this predicate here and this other predicate here, which both of them has enough metadata to be merged into the SQL. So it can recursively traverse into these kind of compositions and extract uh, this as the SQL. And it can also actually extract uh, this terminal operation into SQL because this operation doesn't require anything in the JVM to be materialized. So this can be replaced by a simple count operation. So in fact, the entire stream pipeline is just collapsed and sent to the database. And the only thing we pull in into the JVM is a long value. So that's quite cool. So uh, you, you can see this, it will kind of issue a command like select count from where and the result of that count will be fed into this variable here called count. OK, there, is, there are some constraints. Obviously, you need to uh, use, as I mentioned, predicates that are using that metadata model. Otherwise, they can't be merged into the, the SQL query. So if you write this, this means that you, your lambda here will be executed in the JVM. Whereas in this case, it will be generated uh, and merged into a SQL operation. So that's the first part of the presentation. In the second part, I'm going to talk about the uh, potential uh, spring application. And this spring application is going to use an example, example database called Sakila. Now, Sakila is a kind of a test database that you can use with different applications. And it's about a DVD rental store. For, the, for your young guys, a rent DVD rental store, you have to go there. You flip through all the films. You decide what film you want to rent. You paid for it. And you went home, watched the film. And the next day, you have to go there and return the film again. I mean, we can laugh about that uh, these days. But that was how it was. But this, a subset of this database is still relevant 
uh, and the portion describing films and actors and languages and stuff uh, can be used as kind of a test application. So this is a standard Spring application. I've added the dependency for a JPA provider like Hibernate. And I write my JPA entities like the one I showed you before about users, but in this case, it will be called films and actors and so forth. I also build a view model to represent a kind of a subset of what I want to present with regards to a film. I don't want to present all, there might be 20 or 25 different properties uh, of a film, but I only want to show a small set of them, a small portion. So that, that is what my view model does. So I kind of go about and create the POM file with my normal Spring project. I include the standard JPA streamer dependency, which I show you in the video. And I include this, this little Spring extension here uh, called the Spring Boot JPA Streamer Auto Configure, which is actually just a single class which will wrap the JPA persistence into this uh, JPA Streamer uh, kind of factory thing you need to inject in your Spring application. Um, then I added a, a small number of entities. I added film, actor, and language which are all related. Uh, actually, they are related through some uh, of uh, some relations, some foreign keys. And then I created this view that exposed just a title, description, language, and which actors are appearing in a, in a certain film. So that's the only thing I want to expose in this particular example. And here is my complete REST API. So it's a REST controller as shown here. And uh, this, the first lines here are just to inject my JPA streamer instance. The actual feature, uh, the actual uh, servlet or whatever it's called and nowadays uh, is like this entry point, I think, is, is slash films. And it has two parameters. Uh, it says a page, uh, which page I'm going to show and a page size, default zero and 10. And this is the actual logic. So I'm going to create a stream of my film uh, entities. I skip page times page size, and I only see page size entries. And then I invoke this map film view model from, this is a static constructor that takes a film and turns it into a film view model. And that's that. And because of, you can return a stream in, in Spring. This is actually quite neat. So you don't have to materialize this to a list or something. You just return the stream, and it will be rendered by the, by the web server. So that provides a quite neat way of integrating JPA stream with the endpoints in Spring. OK, so and if you invoke this, uh, it will show the title, description, language, and, and all the actors here that appeared in this film. And actually, it will show nine other films, which couldn't be fit in this to this page here. OK, that's that. But sometimes when you write complex database uh, applications, you, you've got problem with performance. So one of those performance problems are uh, called the n plus 1 select issue. So for example, suppose that we have a user class that has a foreign key to, to a city. You, you want a, a normalized database when you have a, a table representing the cities and another table representing the users. And you want to kind of use them together. And you have created a JPA entity that has a one-to-one -one relation between those. And then you want to stream over that and use both users and cities. And that is typically uh, a, a root of problem, a, a cause for problems, because uh, by default, uh, these kind of associations are lazy. So every time you do something with the user, it's going to uh, create a query uh, that is looking up which city is this. But you can avoid this with, with a JPA stream. You can say that instead of just using user.class, you can use a, a configuration of class and saying that you, I want to use a stream of users, but I also want to join in user city into that eagerly. And that provides me uh, with a good means to control uh, this kind of n plus one select issue uh, behavior. OK, so uh, using Hibernate in JPA can easily lead to high code complexity. You have all these builders or mixing SQL with the Java. Um, so therefore, we integrate the JPA streamer with JPA, which allows you to compose type safe and express your database query. 
it uses standard Java streams. So you don't have to learn a new API. It's the API you probably already know. And you can migrate your own code to JPA Streamer. Either you can do it now, you can do it later, or you can you can forget about it and never migrate old code because JPA Streamer can coexist with your old code. It doesn't require you to do anything. Actually, you can just use it in one place and then just everything run as it used to be. So I think that's a good uh, property of a library. You shouldn't be forced to use it. You, you, you should be able to use it where it makes sense or where you think it makes sense. So that was the first uh, part of this talk. Now I'm going to head over to the second part, which is an actual code demo. And all of the demos I'm showing here is available for you. And an open source project on GitHub called Speedman slash JPA streaming demo. And you can go here and reproduce everything I'm going uh, to show you here. So that's that. So I'm going to head over to my uh, development um, tool here, Adia. And uh, let's let's close all these so we kind of start with a clean sheet. Close our tab. Okay, so here is the API streamer demo, which is exactly or almost exactly as it looks like today. Uh, some changes here I haven't checked in yet. So let's take a, a closer look at the POM file first. So this is a, a normal Hibernate <coughs> kind of project. I depend on JPA Streamer core. I depend on Hibernate core. I have some other Hibernate stuff here and I'm using the MySQL connector here. Nothing surprising here at all. <coughs> we can also take a look at the persistence uh, class here. Just a second. And here you can see that we call this persistent unit Sakila, which is the name of the da exemplary database we are using. We're using Hibernate as the persistent provider. We're using this driver and we're using, well, this very secret password here. I'm running this as a, as a Docker instance, so it doesn't uh, mean anything that you know the very secret password here. Interestingly, I've enabled uh, show SQL here, which means that every time I run, things, run th something, the SQL code will be dumped out on the console. And that's that's really nice because now you can see what's what all the, 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 the streams are actually being merged to. So you can actually observe what's happened uh, under the hood here. We can also head over here to the model, which is this uh, entity, JPA entity here. It's a film and it's nothing surprising at all. It's a film ID, which is the ID. We have title, description, language, and the usual stuff here. We have also actors, which is a many-to-many -many relation uh, using a joint table here. And it's a list of actors. So this, for each film, I can just uh, invoke actors and see, see what kind of actors uh, participated or appeared in, in this film. Uh, I also had a modulation of the actors, actors. it's very similar, uh, actor ID, first name, last name, and so on. There's also a language table which tells which language this is. Okay, so let's look at the first simple demo. It's called simple demo number one. So this is my main method. I create an instance of JPA Streamer using the Sakila uh, persistent uh, unit name, remember, this is the same name as this one here in the persistent unit. So that's how they are connected. So, and the, the object here is to uh, produce a list of all films that has a length between 100 and 120 minutes. Uh, and I want to use the, the kind of inclusive behavior that's standard for Java. Um, for Java, it's standard that these, uh, this parameter from start will be included, but this end will be excluded. That's the standard Java behavior. I know that's different from, from SQL, but uh, as I mentioned before, I like to live in the Java world. So I create this stream of films. I apply this filter here. And then for each film that passes this filter, I invoke this method print film. This is a static method you show here, and you can see that it just prints out. It extracts the film ID, the film title, the film rating, and the film length. And it just prints it out on the console like this. So I expect a number of films being printed with a length between this value here. And let's run it and see if it works. So I run this, I see a Hibernate starts. I see a splash screen here of, uh, of JPA Streamer and which version I'm using 1.0.2 at the moment. 
Uh, also worth to mention, it's, it's, it has the same license as Hibernate, so this makes it easy to integrate this in your existing project. Okay, so now you can see what's ha it's happening under the hood. So we will have a select film from film as films, where film length equal or greater or equal than my first parameter. And the film length is less than the second parameter. And that was exactly what I wanted with this between. So I wanted everything with 100 or greater to be included, and everything that's 120 and less to be included. And that's being sent to the database. And only those uh, films that matches this predicate will ever be pulled in by the JVM. And here I see them using my print film method. So uh, ID number four, call this one, a fair prejudices which is rated at G and it's 170 minutes long. Now this kind of rating here, this is the American, uh, I think movie association or something that rates films and to kind of prevent kids from seeing horror films, stuff like that. I think G, anyone can see that, but PG is parental guide and 13 years and above. So this kind of puts a restriction on it. And this R, that's a really uh, horrible film that you have to be uh, much older to. To, to watch. Okay, that's cool. But what happens now if I want to print the entire film, everything that's in a film, and not only this one here? So let me do that. Let me uh, duplicate this row here, and I will just dump out what's on the what's on the in that entity. So uh, I'm using this uh, method reference here. System out print line that will invoke the two string on my film and print everything out. So I'm going to run that now. And I expect this to print more than what I saw before, but nothing else. But I'm going to be disappointed. So it runs, uh, and as you can see, it actually does print a film with a lot of more information. As you can see, I can scroll on and kind of determine all the details of the actors and all that stuff that's in, in that. But for each uh, film I'm printing, there's a SQL query going on behind the scene, and actually two SQL queries. Because as I mentioned, we have a foreign key reference here. We have a many to many uh, kind of relation. And this is uh, inducing this n plus one select problem here. So how can we come around that problem? So I'm going to revert this uh, change um, I just show you and head over to the next uh, demo which is called simple demo while when joining. And this is how I solve the problem. So instead of using only the class as a parameter, I'm using this configuration of a film class where I'm joining film actors and joining film languages before I actually send this query to the database. And now I've solved the problem because uh, actors and, and languages are going to be eagerly joined into my, my film class here. And I don't have to kind of clutter down and decide that in my model film, I can decide that every time I create the stream. So I can have this logic broken out to another, uh, <clears throat> another place where I, for example, apply uh, sorting and filtering and all that stuff. And then I can just have a parameter what I want to join. In some cases, it makes sense to have lazy loading. And in some cases, it doesn't. And I can do this all on demand here by just supplying different uh, configurations to my stream. So let's run this and see what happens. I'm running here. And now I see all the films here and all the contents of the film and just one select query. And if we look a little bit more carefully into that, I see I have a film as films and a left join language as generated. Well, this is an internal thing and I left join actors here. So you can see that under the hood, this is uh, interpreted as a join operation, actually two join operations, where also I apply my, my predicate here. So most of the stuff, exactly everything in this joining and filtering was merged into the SQL operation, and only the printing was actually uh, conducted into the JVM. Of course, you have to materialize this film uh, using the JDBC driver also. That's also been taken care of for you automatically. Nice. So let's look into another demo. Here is a more complicated demo where I am also looking at films. And now I'm interested in all the films with the rating equals G. But I want them sorted in length order reversed 
that means that I will start uh, with the highest one and then descend, have a descending order. And, and if they have the same length, I apply a second level of, of compared comparator here. Then I want to order them in title order. And I am interested in skipping the 10 first and then seeing the next five of them. So maybe I'm completing a result list or something using some kind of competition. And then I apply this uh, print film so I don't get all this clutter information here. I just am I'm interested in a much smaller thing. So I'm going to run this here. And it appears to work. I have this kind of sorted in the, in the right order. Uh, whether this is uh, correct or not, it's difficult to say here, but I can look at the actual SQL query. And I can see I have from film where film rating equals this first parameter, which was G, and order by film length descending and film length ascending, which is a secondary kind of order criteria here. So that's all good and well. Maybe I'm now interested in something more than just G. Maybe I'm interested in, in a set of operation here. Maybe I, I would like this to be in something. G and uh, what's it? PG, let's take PG13 here, which was another rating. So now I can run this and see what happens. So it's very easy to kind of manipulate this scanner. Now we can see that now we have both Gs and PG13, for example, here. So this shows that it's very easy to kind of use these kind of predicate builders here. I have a bunch of operation here that I can have. It's not null between, contains ignore case and all that stuff. And I don't have to worry about what is the ignore case in my particular language uh, using a database. Maybe I'm using, today I'm using my SQL, but maybe tomorrow I'm going to use an Oracle database or something else. Then I don't have to rewrite my, my SQL code. It just uh, happens uh, automatically. I will revert this one here. Okay, cool. Let me just check what the time is. So I think I have time to talk about a little bit more. Let's talk about transactions. So uh, in, in enterprise application, transactions are very uh, you know, important. And that, uh, that is why you can obtain a JPA streamer instance using a entity manager factory instead of just the persistence name because uh, transactions are kind of local to an entity manager factory instance. And uh, I will go hop over the details here, but actually you use an entity manager, you, you can get the transaction and then you can use JPA streamer as, as any JPA operation. So it kind of fits in very nicely with the concept of transactions in JPA. So you just use a stream as you would have used any JPA operation here. So you can see that you are, we are updating to stuff and then we're using entity manager merge here. Uh, within the stream uh, here. So that's that's cool. Here's another example of, uh, of doing a union. I think this can be made in a better way, uh, but this is just an example how you can kind of compose a stream that creates substreams. So this is a stream of this stream and this other stream, flat mapped, and then we apply distinct because we don't want to have duplicate uh, union. If you want duplicate uh, union, and then you can just remove this and they will appear two times if they are uh, exist in both of the streams above. Now, obviously, this can be made in a more efficient way. Let me just outline how you can do this in a more efficient way. So instead of joining two uh, streams here, you can, you might as well just uh, or predicates together. So if the film is greater than 20 or this film length is PG-13, for example, here, and then I want to do something here for each. Uh, maybe I want to print them out. So I just print line them. And this is more efficient. So I'll just comment away this. And instead of uh, issuing two streams, so this is really, really just one, one stream and one SQL query. So I'm going to run that now. And this will create kind of a, all the union of all these two uh, predicates, actually. So I'm going to, oh, sorry, I'm going to revert this back again and see what it was here. Oh, cleaning up connection pool. Now they fixed this uh, bug in, in the JDBC driver for MySQL. So that means I can remove this kind of quirk here. That's great because now the examples will be easier. So now this won't be stuck as it used to be with the old MySQL driver. I'll try this here. Yeah, it works. Great. 
Okay, so let's head over to this map custom class. So this is similar to the example we had with the uh, with the, the spring example. So here I have my own class, which is called title length, which unsurprisingly just had the title and length here. And it has a constructor, which allows me to extract the, the title and length. And it has a two string method like this. So this allows me kind of to wrap something more complex into something more, more simpler. And if you are using Java records, it will be even simpler to do this uh, here. So if I run this now, uh, map, I'm going to use this map operation to map to my simple one. And here you can see that this is not the film issue anymore. It's my more simple title length here. Now you might think that, well, this sounds good, but this is actually just a projection. I'm just projecting these two to something more simple. This is kind of a tuple here. So isn't there a better way to do it? And of course, I wouldn't say that if there wasn't a way to do it in a better way. So I'm going to head over here to the uh, projection demo here. So here I create a stream of film classes. I sort them in length reverse order. I'm only interested in the first three. And then I do something here. I map a projection of select. So this is actually uh, similar to select. So I can select film ID and film title here only. So that means that after this step here, only film ID and film title uh, kind of survives this um, translation. So when I run this, I expect something similar to this but not the title length clause here, but rather something more generic. So I'm going to run this and see what happens. And indeed, I got something more um, better. So I got this tuple list, which is an ID and, a, and, and uh, a title, an ID and another title. Maybe I want to expand this. Maybe I'm interested in length too. So then I can just add films and length, for example. And let's run this again with my changes and i expect the length to be there and well it's there i wasn't let down by a jpa streamer so now we have we have this length here too again i'm going to revert this okay so that's that now i'm going to show two more kind of uh, more complicated streams the first one is about partitioning now partitioning is that you have two buckets and you want something to end up in one bucket and something else ending up in another bucket. And this is something that streams support from, from the beginning out of, out of the box, so to speak. Uh, so let's see uh, where, where that is. Partition demo, it's here. So um, I'm just going to stream over the film uh, entities here, and then I'm going to collect them. Partition by, and this is a partition key here. Uh, it's not a key, but it's a predicate. That will either be true or false. And depending if it's true or false, it would end up in either the true or the false button in this map here. So there's a map of two actually keys, or at most two keys. And then it's a list of, of films here. So when I run this, I expect that about half of the films will be greater than, than two hours and half will be slightly less. Maybe it's slightly less, slightly more films will be less than two hours because I think two hours is quite a long film. So I'm running this, and you can see how nicely it interacts with the kind of stream ecosystem here. Uh, this is completely unknown to JPA. The Stila can use all the, the, the collectors and everything that's in, in the stream library. So apparently, there were uh, 543 films, which were longer than two hours, and slightly less under. So maybe there were kind of a tendency to include longer films in this particular database. Finally, I'm going to look at a uh, really advanced example of using Java streams. Hey, Per, yes. we've got a question from the audience. If it would be possible to uh, zoom in on the code a little bit, um, as it is a, a little tough to read at this size. Ah, I see. I'll try to do that. Um, well, they changed this, so uh, not sure if, that, if there is presentation mode, maybe. Have you? I think there used to be a presentation mode. Can't find it out. Appearance tool. Uh, well, it has mode. 
I'm sorry for that. Uh, I know there's another way of setting the, the font size here. Not sure how that works, but maybe it's like preferences. Let me try and uh, editor font. I'm getting there and let me type 18. Wow, huge improvement. Thanks for that uh, feedback. So I hope you can see this better. Okay, so that's that. So let's head over to the pivot demo. Now the pivot demo that might seem a bit frightening here, but what we actually want to do is to create something that for each actor creates a map of the different, um, the different ratings uh, number of film that actor participated in. For example, there might be an actor that is more uh, likely to do horror movies, and then there, that actor is, has more uh, appearances in R files, whereas there are kind of child uh, stars, and they're much likely to appear in films that are rated by G, which is available to the general audience. So that's what I want to do. And as you can see, uh, I'm using Java 8 notation here. But if I would have used uh, something else, I can just like var notate this. Uh, fortunately, I, unfortunately, I don't have that uh, available at the moment. But that makes things a bit more simple here. So I'm going to create a stream over my actor class. And I'm going to eagerly join in films, because I only want to do one query. And then I collect them grouping by, which is a standard collector in Java. And I'm grouping them by something called, uh, 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 what's it called? Uh, cat, mm. oh, it's called something. Uh, let's see what it's called. Uh, well, I forgot the name. Anyway, it's a, it's a classifier. Sorry for that. So it's called a classifier. And the classifier, it's, it, it is the actor itself. I might have selected to extract the name of the actor, for example, but I want the entire object to be here as the classifier. And then I stream over all the films, uh, flat mapping all the films, uh, and I'm grouping them again by rating. But I don't want all the ratings. I just want to count them. So that, that's what I'm expressing here using this. Uh, perhaps some of you aren't that uh, use, used to use uh, Java streams. And this might sound a bit frightening. But actually, it's a very powerful way of composing your, uh, your layers. So this is actually a second order of, of uh, grouping by here and you can have any order and any depth of this so if i run this now here uh, ah, this is also bigger so now you can see that for example this uh, kirk jonovich appeared in four films with pg-13 two r films and eight of these and so forth so this shows a, a very neat way of uh, interacting with the, the stream ecosystem with the jpa using jpa streamer so that was uh, about Hibernate. That, let me just uh, touch a little bit on, on the spring demo that I showed before. So again, we have this model of film uh, actors and languages. I will not go into the details of that. I have this film view model, which is similar to the, my custom class that I had before. So this, this extracts the ID, title, description, language, and a list of actors uh, from a film. And here is this kind of static constructor that takes a film and returns a new film view model. I think actually, in a real case, uh, it might be the case that this object is never created. Uh, it might be detected by the escape analysis of, of the JVM and C2 compiler. So in some cases, this will never be actually created on the heap, depending on, on uh, a number of uh, issues here. And this, again, is the controller. Uh, so this is very similar to what I presented uh, on my slide. So I will auto-inject this JPA streamer via this uh, auto-wide uh, constructor here. And then I will invoke this kind of endpoint here uh, using page and page size. And I'll just return the stream here using my view model. And that pretty much completes my intended presentation. And of course, if you have more questions uh, other than and the font size, uh, I'm very happy to to answer them. And uh, why don't you try uh, JPA Streamer? Head over to jpastreamer.org and kick the tires. And let me know what's good and what's bad, because I, I want to know that too. What can be improved and how does this fit your needs? And if you need help or, or consulting, we are here to, to help. So that, that's it. And thank you for listening in today, guys. 
Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Per, for that uh, excellent presentation. Um, at this point, I'm not seeing any questions in the chat, but um, what I will do is I'll just do some quick housekeeping items before we wrap up here. Um, and if anybody has questions, we can get to them after that. Um, so the next Jakarta Tech Talk takes place on May 18th, and we have Ryan Superak presenting Why Jakarta EE Matters. And I just posted the link in the chat for that if you would like to register, by all means. Um, another follow-up, Jakarta EE is still collecting submissions for the 2021 Jakarta EE Developer Survey. Um, completing this survey helps provide input for the Java ecosystem stakeholders to better understand requirements, priorities, and perceptions of the enterprise developer communities. And if you would not take a minute, or not mind taking a minute to fill that out, if you haven't already, I just posted the link in the chat for that as well. Um, third, we are always looking for more tech talks. If you would like to present um, something to do with cloud native Java um, or a project you're working on in the community, you can sign up to present it here. And finally, if you have any feedback, we are always looking for uh, to see how we can improve the Tech Talk program. Um, so that would be great if you could do that as well. At this point, I am not seeing any more questions. Um, so if, again, if, if anybody has any more, please feel free to ask. But thank you again, Per, for taking the time to join us today. Thanks for having me. Perfect. Uh, thanks a lot. All right, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye. Yeah. Goodbye.